one of the issues that kind of really bothersome is that the Biden administration is lying about a lot of things. And just to give you an example on what they did last week, the Environmental Protection Agency that the EPA issued the yearly report about transportation. And they claimed that during the Biden years, fuel economy of cars reached record improvement. So fuel economy is the best ever. And the emissions from cars are the lowest ever based on that fuel economy number. This is a lie. And the reason why, because for 50 years, when we talk about fuel economy, we are talking about the amount of gasoline or diesel used per mile. All of a sudden, they inserted electric vehicles in the numbers. And of course, when you divide on an average, all the numbers will go down. But if you take electric vehicles out, you see that the, the fuel efficiency being flat for the last seven years and emissions being flat. So there was no improvement. This was a lie by inserting the electric vehicles. There is no way, no one in his right mind will accept the idea of inserting the electric vehicles to do those calculations. And how do you calculate uh, uh, electricity and compare it to gasoline? Because one of the issues we have, and this is kind of funny, and I don't, I don't want to get technical here, but the idea is they used the amount of electricity used in the, in the battery of the car. But if you go back to the source and, and look at the electricity wasted until it gets to the car, the whole calculation changes. Where is the irony? The irony here is when you apply that to oil, it's exactly the opposite. If you put 1,000 barrels of crude in a refinery, you get more than 1,000 barrels out of the refinery. You get an increase of the volume because everything gets lighter. While in electricity, it's exactly the opposite. So the whole calculations are fake. And this is just an example of this. Then you look at how the media and politicians are reporting renewable energy. They always talk about capacity. They don't talk about the actual generation. You look at the media, how they are reporting electric vehicles, and you end up with another exaggeration for two reasons. The first reason is uh, car companies publish their quarterly reports. Those are very detailed reports. They give you the number of cars by brand and name and everything. But the media basically report everything just as reported by those companies. Only when it comes to the electric vehicle section, they report growth in percentages, but they don't mention the numbers. They tell you, well, for this type of electric vehicle, uh, the demand for it increased by, or sales increased by 145%. And they stop there. They don't tell you they sold throughout three months only 900 cars. Because the numbers are so small, they don't want to report them. They report the increase, 145. In a sense, if you keep reading these things, you will wonder, am I the only one who is not driving electric vehicle? So that's that's one one issue when we talk about this. What we need from the companies that publish reports is to publish the number of cars on the road, not the sales, because sales are misleading on several fronts. We have forests right now of electric vehicles that's been idle, and they are in hundreds of thousands, in, whether in China or in Europe. And those are counted as sales, and they are still being counted as a reason for decline in all demand. But they've been there idle for three years. The other final issue on electric vehicles is that insurance is going through the roof. The most expensive insurance right now is on electric vehicles. Some of the insurance premiums per year is about $8,000 because when they are involved in accidents, 
the cost of repair is extremely high. That's why we are seeing now a shift to hybrid. And I strongly believe that the future is for hybrid, not for electric. And therefore, the demand, the current expectations or the current forecast for oil demand are way lower than reality. And that's why I am bullish on oil in the long term. It makes so much sense. I just wanted to add one thing on the transportation because I saw you also mentioned it that have you seen the perfect balance sheet in terms of now we're discussing deep sea mining to get all the minerals needed for uh, batteries. Then you have the weight problem. So the car is so much heavier that that has a second or third order consequence. Have you seen people like fully getting the full picture in the balance sheet or is that just never going to happen because of the narrative? In 2017, I mentioned that at a conference. And I am supposed to reappear again as a speaker in that conference. After I mentioned the issue of the weight, they canceled me. They don't want to talk about it. And the reason why, for people to understand the difference between two cars, one electric and a similar one that's gasoline, could add up to one ton. Okay? So imagine this. Uh, roads are, if, if all cars basically are going to be heavier by one ton or more, uh, we are going to have more wear and tear on roads. And roads are made of asphalt or, or cement. Both of them depend heavily on fossil fuel. Their emissions are not counted in those cars. Then you have, and anyone right now can go to the web and search it. You have electric vehicles have more wear and tear on tires than a regular car. And tires made of what? Made of fossil fuel. So their emissions are not counted either. But... The issue is not here. The issue is, imagine those uh, uh, the uh, multi-story garages in downtowns and various cities where you have, let's say, 15-story building that's all garages. And it can, let's say, it can handle uh, 7,000 cars. And all of a sudden, you have an additional weight of 7,000 tons. And what's going to happen to those buildings? Okay. So these are really big issues that we need to deal with. In addition to other issues, right now we have almost 17 states, uh, if, I am, uh, if my memory serves me right, 17 states in the United States that impose additional taxes on electric vehicles to compensate for the, for the loss of gasoline tax. The gasoline tax in many states are used to maintain roads and bridges. Uh, so they are imposing those taxes. Some states and some other countries are thinking seriously about shifting to mileage tax. A mileage tax, basically, regardless of your car, whether it's electric or not, you have to pay on per mile case, although we might end up with several lawsuits, especially in the United States, regarding privacy, because the only way they can measure that is to monitor you, and that leads to uh, major uh, privacy issues. Uh, but the, uh, the, so we have uh, the replacement of gasoline taxes is a big issue. And then we have those batteries that are going to wear out over time. And as we mentioned, those are very big, massive batteries with toxic materials. Some people brag about, oh, recycling. Well, uh, if recycling is good, why are they are getting government subsidies on one hand? And the other issue is the the technology of batteries have not stabilized yet. It's not standard yet. So why I have to invest $50 million on a recycling project to extract certain materials only to find out that Tesla and others changed their technology and my technology now, my recycling technology is useless. So that's why we are seeing less uh, uh, or, or we are not seeing massive investment in recycling simply because that technology is not stable yet. Here is the big issue when it comes to oil demand. If you look at long-term forecasts, you'll find out that most of the decline in oil demand in the future is not coming because of the impact of electric vehicles. It's coming out of the fuel efficiency or fuel economy in gasoline and diesel vehicles. So we are talking about eight to 12 million barrels uh, by 2045 that we will lose because of that. Where is the problem? Of course, those numbers are exaggerated, and I don't want to delve into the details of it. But here is the problem. The cars that's supposed to be produced by GM and Ford and others to be more efficient 
are no longer there because those, those companies are shifting to all electric. So if they are shifting all to, uh, to, uh, to all electric, then where this decline in demand is going to happen if that efficiency is not there? We already counted for the impact of electric vehicles, but yet they are counting for additional impact. And that's why the oil demand in the future is going to be way higher than all estimates because they forget this point. Companies are not going to produce unless we have a major shift again and companies will say, you know what, sorry, I need to go back uh, and produce gasoline and diesel cars.